Hello everybody, John here and today on To The Garage we're looking at chassis twist in the NP300. How much is standard? And we're doing an experiment with my vehicle. Everything for you guys. <laughs> so that maybe if you think you're having trouble, you can compare back to this example and uh, see what you get. Well, first thing is to thank subscriber John York for the inspiration for this video. Um, he's uh, got some concerns about the bed moving independently of the cab on his vehicle. So this experiment is essentially trying to measure twist between cab and truck bed, which is normal to a small extent on a chassis vehicle with a two-part body like a pickup truck. So first stage is to clean off the window that is on your canopy if you have one fitted and on the back window of the cab. Once you've cleaned those off you need some form of target I'll just go across on a bit of sticky paper that I'm going to stick to the outside of the canopy and that wants to be mounted one meter above the chassis line which on this vehicle is basically as you can see um, just a little way down from the top of the window as it lines up with one of the heater elements one from the top then on the inside of the car I've mounted my GoPro camera and that's taking a picture of the uh, target looking from the inside and I'm taping a steel rule to the glass on the truck cab. It doesn't really matter where these two align, just as long as you can see the vertical line on your target and it intersects the ruler. You don't actually need the GoPro as long as you uh, either uh, do the experiment and just check it out before and after or get somebody to sit in the back and watch. I've also put this bit of tape on the glass to make it easier for me to see from uh, my interior mirror whether or not the target was moving relative to uh, the cab. Next stage is you've got to apply twist to the vehicle. In this experiment I decided to apply maximum static twist which means basically if I lift two of the wheels so they're almost off the ground diagonally opposite then that's the maximum twist that the vehicle is going to get applied in a static manner. Once you're going off-road and bouncing around then obviously you can apply much higher loads but I can't simulate that without a very special four post rig. So I've got two um, pretty robust vehicle ramps and all this nonsense you're seeing now is me arranging the vehicle such that I can apply maximum twist with a ramp under diagonally opposite wheels. The reason for the lump of concrete at the back, my ramps are just a little bit too tall to go underneath the running boards. If you're trying this at home and using store-bought ramps, they'll probably go under fine. Mine, as you can see, are home-built things, um, which I like, but they are a little bit heavy and they're a little bit taller. needed to uh, put the concrete block and a brick in place to maintain a bit of height until we're onto the ramps. I'm going to have to position the other ramp such that my, my front wheel would touch that ramp at the same time as the rear wheel impacted on the other ramp. Now, although we're a four-wheel drive vehicle, the mission is get the car up onto the ramps until the point where wheels spin. I don't have diff locks, but I have engaged four wheel drive low range. And now I'm going to see how far up the ramp we can get before we start to uh, get that spin.
As the wheels have been trying to spin, we know there's almost no load on the front right and back left, and therefore the axles are as far articulated as they can be in this static scenario. And therefore maximum twist is being applied to the chassis. actually see how the truck and top is sticking out on this side at the top compared to the cab body line and on the other side trying to simulate the same angle it's basically flush rear view on this side you can see less of the cab body it's overhanging. While getting it back down off the ramps, I unfortunately managed to scrape the underside edge of my running boards again. Um, basically, forgot myself, um, came down a little bit firmly, and then rolled off the back of the slabs rather than um, doing it in the right order. See the ramp picking up and scraping the bottom of the running board now. The moral of this tale is if you want to try this experiment out, use conventionally sized ramps which are about an inch lower than mine and you'll have no trouble or put some uh, blocks in front of the wheels to help them get on and off the ramps a little bit more easily. So the whole point of doing this exercise was so that the GoPro camera could record the twist in the vehicle. Um, so let's have a little look at the imagery that the GoPro recorded. We've condensed time a little bit to make it uh, a little bit more watchable. So this is the footage from the GoPro, speeded up somewhat, um, and what we're looking for is the change in the dimension. So it started off on 72. And by twisting the chassis as far as we can, you can see uh, the indicators moving. So this is again comparing the back window of the cab with the front window of the canopy and seeing how much they move relative to each other. It's hardly a perfect measure of twisting the chassis, but it is something you could repeat at home. And as my vehicle has got yeah high mileage, but is well looked after, has got no issues, I think we can assume that this is a baseline of normal. A little bit of sidestep damage because I didn't think the experiment through properly. I think this is aluminium, so I'm just going to put a bit of paint on that to protect it. No real harm done, but even so, uh, if you've appreciated this video, then Please subscribe as I am damaging my vehicle for your entertainment. Um, no, loving doing this, guys. Uh, really interesting for me as well. So um, come back to the garage very soon. Um, subscribe, hit the little bell icon. You'll see the next time I'm doing something daft. You don't want to miss out. 
uh, whether it's NP300s, XK8s, T25s, or just tinkering around in your garage with lots of candle, come on back to the garage very soon. Share us with your friends. Thank you.